Hello my nerd musician friend, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Fritzing. Fritzing is a software that you can do things like that. You can draw your schematics, place components and draw the wires so it's easy for you to actually uh, assemble your circuit later. Fritzing can also uh, be used to make uh, actually printed circuit boards to design that but for that I prefer another software as SkyCAD which I'm going to show you how to use in another video. But here we are going to learn how to do this kind of thing inside Fritzing. So first thing you wanna do is coming to download and downloading Fritzing. Uh, now it's paid, maybe you have an older version when it was free, but if you don't have it yet, you have to pay around eight euros. So come here and download your version. After you download it and open Fritzing, you're gonna have this window, you have this welcome thing here, uh, and then the breadboard, which we're going to spend our time today. Also going to have a schematic, which will be useful for making uh, uh, the schematic drawing and even the PCB layout and even code. This is more advanced and I'd rather use KiCad for that. So we're going to stay here in breadboard. So it opens with a breadboard and uh, you can also just type here and find different types of breadboard. For example, you can drag and drop and just place things here. So uh, what I want to do here is a project that I want to do for a long time, which is a macro, uh, it's a MIDI controller for controlling the macro, uh, macro controllers here in Ableton because if you use Ableton, you are used to this uh, window here and you can map this to different parameters and it's always like this, like this uh, four uh, by four or two by four. And I want to create a MIDI controller with this layout with buttons that when I make a MIDI script for Ableton, I'll be uh, able to navigate between macrocontrollers, between tracks, uh, it will, so it will be a really small MIDI controller that will be able to control a lot of things inside Ableton. First thing I wanna do is creating my uh, breadboard layout in case I want to do this in my breadboard first or which is something I want to do. And I will use rotary encoders with push buttons. Uh, you can use rotary encoders because when you move to another uh, macro, for example here, and if the value is different, the encoder will adapt itself to the new value. So from 35, it will become three. If you're using a regular potentiometer, it will, when you move the potentiometer, it will come back to where it was before. So that's not nice. And I am going to use a TinCLC board, which is this one, is an Arduino compatible, but it has more pins and more pins with, uh, with interrupts because for using rotary encoders, we need pins with interrupts uh, and every pin with this int here has interrupts. I teach exactly how to use encoders and what, what are interrupt pins inside the Making Music with Arduino. And, but you already know that, the link is below. So I'm going to use a TNC LC board. So let's go to Fritzing and look for a TNC LC. So it doesn't exist here. So what I usually do, uh, I'll have to find one. So I'll put TNC LC Fritzing and see if there's any part uh, available. So if anybody, any good soul did that for us. So there's the TNC 3.1 and I believe that's the same footprint. So I'm going to download here in my Fritzing Parts folder and here is my TNC. I'm going to open this part and when you open it, it's going to open uh, the part here. It's not going to show, to show you anything, or maybe it will, but maybe not but it will stay here in case you want to use it. Uh, but the only thing we need to do here is closing and keep the imported parts 
and I don't want to save this sketch and I want to save it to my part. Okay, so now I'm going to close and open a new file again, which is here. And if I type TNC here, I won't find, but it's here in mine. Now it's going to be here. So I can just drag and drop. Here, if you press uh, the scroll wheel in your mouse, you can move things. And if you press Alt, or option and scroll up and down you can zoom in and out so things you can do you can drag your part here and you can right click you can rotate if you want 45 degrees 180 for this let's keep the way it was and before we place it the other part I'm going to need is a rotary encoder with switch which i already downloaded uh, i didn't find in fritzing before so let me just show you something when i drag a part you can see that, that this now is green and this is green right where the pins are i don't know if you know how to use a breadboard but i'm going to leave a link here where i teach exactly how to use a breadboard but basically, let's say I placed here, line 25. So if this pin is in any uh, hole here in line 25, everything that I connect here will connect to this pin. Basically, imagine that there is a conductive material below all these pins. So if you connect here, you're connecting it to the conductive material. And if you connect here, you're con connecting to the same conductive material. So it's a way you can connect things without soldering. So if I just drag a wire from here, now you're connecting this pin here to the wire. So that's the magic about breadboards. And you have this part here, and you have this part here. And for example, this line is one line, this is one line, this is another line, this is another line, and this part, you change the orientation, so you have a horizontal line here, and a horizontal line here, and a horizontal line here, and a horizontal line here, okay? So it allows you to connect things in different ways. So let's go to our schematic here, or in our to our breadboard. So I'm going to drag my TNC, and... The Tinsy has pins with interrupts in most of the pins. So all, every pin that has an int has an interrupt. And I will need that to connect these two legs of my encoder. Each leg of this will go to a digital pin with interrupt. Okay, but before Let's place more components. What I did was I selected a component, the part, and Command D to duplicate, or you can just right click and duplicate, copy, do things like that. So I will add four rotary encoders. Actually, I'm going to add eight rotary encoders, I'm sorry, because that's what we want here with Ableton. Copy no, again, unselect this and copy, command C and command V. Yeah, that's what I want. Eight rotary encoders. Oops. I only want to move them here. And the reason I'm putting them close here is because I want room here for extra tactile buttons. So here, that's the one I want. So I'm going to place duplicate and duplicate. We're still missing one button. 
I would actually like to place another one, but I would have to add another breadboard. And something that you can do is you can click in the component and you have, for example, some of them will have different options. So I am in full plus, but if I put half plus, you can see that you can change the size of the of the component. So I'm just going to stay at full plus. But you see here that now it's like things were out of place. So I'm just going to move them so the breadboard is happy. Okay, so now we need to start dragging wires. So each encoder will go to two different uh, digital pins. So let's look here in the TNC LC pinout. And one, two, three, four. I'm going to drag a wire. Okay. So now this wire is straight and uh, doesn't really help me to visualize exactly what's going on. So I can just click in any point and add a joint. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so then next pin. Okay, so I finished placing all the all the wires for the digital pins here of the, the encoder. And we also need to place the ground. So ground will come here. So uh, this will be our common ground and we like to use another color. So wire color and black. So one thing you can do, you can see that the wire, the black wire is on top. You can raise and lower. So send backward. Didn't really work. Send to back. Yeah, that worked. So you can do that. These two pins here is for the switch when you press the encoder. So this three here is for the encoder itself. And this two here is for the switch. One of the terminals to ground two. Now this will be the ground of this top part. Okay, and then the next part will be the switch. So what is left for us is this six pins and we don't have enough but for a proof of concept that is enough for us so let's drag it here so see that we don't have available pins in the breadboard anymore uh, but since we're going to actually design our own print printed circuit board we're going to use those extra pins that are here. Okay, so now we are finally done with the amount of pins we can actually use uh, in the in the TNC LC without using a multiplexer. We could use a multiplexer, but for this project, I want to use um, as less components as I can make it uh, super simple. Okay, so I think we're finally done. So remember some things won't be usable in a breadboard like those pins here because they are already connected. But it's good for you to see at least which pins are available, what you can use, what's possible and what's not. And when you go to assemble to your, your circuit, uh, like using wires or uh, actually designing your own printed circuit board, this will be really handy okay so that's how you use fritzing so let's uh let's save it so i have like ableton micro control and you can actually uh, export as image so i'm going to export a png file and here is my png file which i can share with you guys uh, and use it for me later. And before we go, I actually thought that I could use one button to turn the device on and off and one LED to actually show if it's on or off. 
So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, for your LED, you need a resistor. So I put here a 220 ohm resistor. And one thing that's really important that I was almost forgetting is that you need to connect both sides here. And one thing that if you press command, you can do this nice thing here. Maybe not that much. So I'm connecting both common grounds of the breadboard. Where is our ground? So the ground is here. So that's our ground. So now everything here is connected to everything here. And I guess our breadboard is now ready. You can add a note. So Ableton macro control. And here is our circuit in the breadboard made inside fritzing. The next step is actually designing the PCB, the printed circuit board. And I just released a brand new course uh, called KiCad PCB design, where I teach how to design PCBs, highly professional PCBs from scratch until production. You can order your PCBs from a company, highly professional PCBs with uh, surface mount components, everything you need to know about KiCad and the link here is below. And also uh, for making the MIDI controller, I have the Making Music with Arduino course here in the description below. And with that, you'll be able to produce highly professional MIDI controllers from the schematics, the circuit, the Arduino programming, how to build enclosures, and now how to design and manufacture your own printed circuit board. So guys, that's it for now. See you later. And don't forget to give the like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. So see you.